Hey everybody, what's up? Nihon Tiger here. Welcome back to Crack Pack. Woo, we made it. Episode number two. It's in an end. That's still burnt up, but we made it. And you might have noticed the house has got a uh, little expansion over here now. Uh, we're slowly kind of expanding the... It's a giant horse, by the way. Uh, I found that and I moved over here. And I don't know what it does. It's just a giant horse that breaks everything. Um, so yeah, he's going to sit out there for a while until I figure out what to do with him. But he came with the saddle too, which is really nice. I think it's from that, that unicorns mod. But yeah, we've got our house here with the extension. Uh, the first probably of many extensions. Let's go inside, take a look. Shall we? Ah, yes. So the extended area is actually where our tinker's stuff has been moved to. Give me a little bit more space. I have made some more Pam's Harvest Craft stuff. I made a presser. Um, you put like soy and various things in here and it presses it down. It works for juice as well. And a churn, which works for milk, I believe. It turns it into butter. Uh, we'll use all of this stuff in the near future when we start to craft things in Pam's Harvest Craft as far as meals. Um, just to give you an example here, I'm going to go ahead and get back out of that. But there's a lot of meals um, that you can make. So let's see here. We've got like all this stuff I right here, like glazed carrots, uh, butter potatoes. Each of these require different recipes. Like, for example, the butter, um, you have to get heavy cream. So you get heavy cream. You get the silk and tofu out of a presser. Uh, melon juice. That's shapeless crafting, I think. Is it? Where's the milk at? Because that goes into the uh, that goes into the churn. And I know that is right here. So we can do that. Yeah, it goes into the churn to make butter. I need a little bit of salt. So just fresh milk, salt, and the butter goes into the churn. You can see here, um, milk goes up here, salt down here, and then butter will pop out there. Uh, presser, you just put something here, and various items will pop out there. So that's how that works. Now today. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and start setting up some more stuff here to go with the pulverizer and hopefully I do this right. So this is right here. This is all of our pulverized metals that we've made and I've got an item hopper here which feeds into the pulverizer. Um, the steam dynamo is disconnected for the moment. We will reconnect it in a moment uh, as soon as that's done. So I'm going to go ahead take the chest and we will put that... Where are we going to put that? Put that up here for now. Just to move it out of the way. So right over here, I've got a bunch of crafting stations. And these are things that we're going to need to work on today. So I've laid them out already just to, to go ahead and craft everything up um, ahead of time. Save a little bit of time for the video. So we're going to start off with this right here. So we've got four lead ingots, four glass, and then a block of redstone. And you put them all together, you get a leadstone energy cell frame. And that goes into making the leadstone energy cell. If I could type correctly. Nope. There we go. Leadstone energy cell. So the frame goes into all of this. So we need a conductance coil and three copper ingots to make that. Um, there's also the hardened energy cell, which uses the leadstone, plus four invar ingots. Um, and if you go ahead and... Oh, you can also do it, I guess, just with a... Uh, Oh, it makes a frame. Okay, so that's how that works. So uh, you can see the leadstone energy cell frame goes into a lot of different things. The magma crucible will make one of those. Energetic infuser probably make one of those in the future as well. Um, those are things that we'll need to take a look at soon. Um, but we'll get the copper ingots. The redstone conductance coil requires electrum and redstone. And that requires electrum grit, which is gold and silver combined together. So for that... We're just going to take one silver and one gold, put them in our crafting grid up here, and there we go, Electrum Grit. And then we can go ahead and do we have anything that we can burn. Uh, I keep the slabs because those will actually be useful. Uh, let's just burn some of these extra logs that we have. We'll take uh, six of them. That should be enough. I think three will make an ingot, right? It's probably actually more than we need. Uh, but this right here, too, this is something that we're going to make, uh, bronze from forestry. So what this is going to be used for is something called a sturdy casing. Um, and we're going to use the sturdy casing 
to make a whole bunch of stuff. So pretty much everything in forestry in this mod pack is going to use a sturdy casing. All of the the basic uh, blocks that you can interact with. So like analyzers, um, you can see the carpenter. That's what we're going to make, the carpenter here. So we need a lot more bronze ingots and some stained glass. Uh, the carpenter is very useful. That's your kind of your base uh, item in forestry. It is used to craft pretty much everything else um, that you're going to get out of that packet. Centrifuges, fermenters, uh, moisteners, squeezers, stills, thermionic fabricator, uh, which is very useful. Uh, the rain tank, the biogenerator. Uh, so basically everything in uh, in forestry and gentistry, which is a, I believe it's a mod that ties into forestry with the bees. Um, a lot of that stuff all uses sturdy casings and uh, lumber mill from extra trees, uh, fruit press, brewery. So these are all things, uh, reinforced casing for genetics, distillery. These are all things that we will eventually make, but we're going to focus on making the carpenter today once we get everything else done here. So let's go ahead and craft all those bronze ingots. And then if you want to make a sturdy casing, it's just a chest full of bronze ingots. And I've made... See, I've made four more here. I made those on accident. I didn't want to make them early, but sometimes you make them on accident. Uh, we'll go ahead, put the sturdy casing in the middle, glass down here, and then on either side, and that's our carpenter. So that will be a block that we use today. Uh, we've made the leadstone energy cell frame, so we need uh, one, two, three, and we need some redstone. And we can go ahead and pop these out. So two. Looks like that's going to be one to one for that. That's great. Um, let's go ahead and put the electromagnet in here. One, two. Conductance coil. Get that. Copper ingots go in here. Put the energy cell frame in the middle. And there's our energy cell. So this, we're going to bring this over here. Put that down there. And this will uh, act as a uh, storage for our our excess energy. So we don't have to worry about priming the system so much and we can set that sideways so that will feed into the uh, let's do an energy cell which is nice and we can just fill this up with coal and I think we need to configure it so that this goes in here um, hmm. ah. trying to figure out how to make this I'm trying to remember how to make this work is what I'm trying to do. So I know that there is a way to pump it in. I did it on the revive server. I can't remember how this is all supposed to go in here. That's yeah, that is filling on up, and this has full energy. But this is oh, it's getting some energy. Oh, so it's got four hundred thousand RF. Okay, there we go. And so now it's filling up. Uh, I had to, had to set the configuration up right. So that's going to fill up while this is working. So you can see it's draining. And we'll need some more water in here because it's just going to keep producing. As long as we have fuel in there, it's going to keep producing energy until the uh, the dynamo will keep producing energy until this fills up. And 400,000 RF doesn't seem like a lot. Um, it isn't a lot, but it'll, it'll do what we need it to do. So this right here... This is the redstone furnace, and this is what we're making today. It's a redstone reception core. We made one of those last time. Redstone, machine frame, basic. We made one of those. Uh, copper gears, and then brick blocks. It's your redstone furnace. And this bad boy is going to go right there. And that's a, that's a very specific reason for that. Is we want this to, uh, to go ahead and pipe out from the pulverizer into the redstone furnace. Um, that should... If we do this right, if we, we might have to set up the configuration again a little bit, um, but that should this should fill up, and then the pulverizer should do its thing, and then we should be able to pipe directly from the pulverizer into the redstone furnace. And I think the way we're going to do that is using a transport pipe. Uh, so the transport pipe, for those of you the recipe, uh, if you're wondering, is just see if I can grab this real quick. Uh, the recipe is just you know, one glass in the middle, and then iron on either side. So we won't make more. We don't need more. But these uh, allow us from they're from Buildcraft Transport, and they allow us to route items from one uh, machine to another. So what we want is we want the output from here 
which is this red one, to go through this pipe down here to the the blue input. And then when this has energy in it, it will conduct um, conduct the way we want it to. It'll go ahead and just automatically smelt everything up. And then we can go ahead and have that output. Let's put the dolly away. But we can have that directly output into this chest. And then we'll just grab all that. So we probably should make this an iron chest. Um, that would be easier. Uh, can we make a gold chest out of it though? Let me just see here. Okay, iron chest recipes. Uh, iron chest, max stack size is 64, gold chest. Yeah, we could do that. Um, we could even go to diamond chest. That would actually be very useful because we have enough diamonds to do it. And we have enough glass, right? Oh, yeah, three. Oh, we got enough. Oh, yeah, we got enough. Um, so let's see here. We'll take two of those. We'll make a diamond chest. We'll make this into a diamond chest. Um, simply because I think it's probably a lot easier. Uh, I might have to empty it out. Oh, I got some gold in there. Oh, maybe one short. Crap. Uh, so we'll just take one out of here. Go ahead and pop that bad boy in there. Get that smelt up. Uh, so we'll need to empty out this chest very quickly. So now we can do that. Go ahead and grab this. And this is an uh, iron chest for those of you who have never seen iron chests. They are uh, they're upgradable chests that you can go ahead and just keep making stronger and stronger and stronger. And so that's an iron chest. And let's put this down real quick. I'm going to show you the difference. Iron chest holds a double chest um, worth of stuff. So you can see that's a double wooden chest and an iron chest exactly the same. Here we go. And go ahead and click that. Let's take a look at the gold chest, which is, pop this down. Basically, that's two iron chests put together. So that is create the upgrade. And now we're going to take a look at the diamond chest. If we do this right, right? Okay, so diamond chest goes down here and look at all of that space. This is basically four iron chests put together. So basically you can see that each one keeps uh, going more and more and more um, space. And so now we have essentially infinite space so we don't have to worry well it's not really infinite space but you know it's a lot of space we're not gonna we're not gonna run out of space doing this uh, so let's go ahead and one of the things i want to do real quick i'm gonna go run down to the mine oh the cheese have grown back i'm gonna run down to the mine and we're gonna grab some uh, real quick resources so that i can work on getting the uh Getting the pulverizer and redstone furnace to to activate properly. Now, there's uh, there's probably some questions about would I want to keep the dust um, on its own? Would I want to have it pulverized and then just have it manually feed into the uh, into the uh, redstone furnace? That's a possibility. That's certainly a possibility. I think that's. Uh, Something I haven't played around with this too much in the past. I mostly just did everything manually. So automation is it's something I'm not the best at. Uh, I will be 100% honest with you on that. I could do a lot better in learning how to automate things and figuring out how to get the pipes to work. I think once I know how to do that, I will be a lot better off with modded because it's always been a struggle of mine. I do everything by hand. Um, I kind of do it in real life too. I do everything by hand. Um, as far as, you know, animating stuff and doing intros, uh, there's not a lot of automation. I prefer kind of the, the handheld touch, but with Minecraft, it can get really annoying to have to kind of always, uh, filter out, you know, everything that you want to filter out and having to manually insert things into machines. There's, there's a level of control that's really, that's really nice with that, but it's very tedious. It's very, uh, there's a lot of work that goes into it. And sometimes you just don't have the, the time to do it. Sometimes you just want to, you know, put your stuff in the machine and go explore it. And I think I, I think I want to learn how to get better at, at doing that. Oh, oh, okay. Game froze on me for a moment. Scared the poop out of me. 
So we'll just grab these, and I think we'll be done after that. That's, this is probably good enough for an example, right? Ooh, some dense ores. Dense ores are your friends. You always want to mine the dense ores because they are they are worth a ton of regular ores. Let's grab some graphite, um, some silicon for galactic craft. Oh, is that uh, no? That's osmium. So no, we don't have a use for we have a use for osmium, but we just don't have a use for it at the moment. We're not at the point where we need to be too concerned with grabbing large amounts of osmium. I I actually already have a lot of osmium, so I'm not I'm not in the the area where it's like I gotta get lots of osmium for all my stuff. We'll we'll, we'll come to that point eventually when we start to get into some of the mechanism stuff, especially with the uh, the various um. Uh, metallurgic infusers and stuff like that. So we're going to go back up here and hopefully pop some of this stuff into the um, into the pulverizer, get it to run off the redstone, uh, leadstone energy cell. So once we can do that, then we're probably pretty good. So this has got uh, 20, 286,000 and I ran out of water. Okay, so that's Again, with the steam dynamo, you have to keep a pump full of water. Uh, we could probably get an aqueous accumulator to do that for us. Uh, that might be something that we'll we'll do that in the future, and we'll we'll, we'll investigate that. And we could also make a uh, a device that constantly pumps charcoal out, and then pumps the charcoal into the steam dynamos. Um, that would I think that probably would work really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the tin ore in here, and. It is draining the energy from that. So you can see there goes the iron transport pipe stuff. It goes right down here into the redstone furnace. Nice and simple. Very cool. So that works as expected. Now we need to set this configuration up so that it draws power from the, uh, the leadstone energy cell. And that is where I'm going to have to see here when this stops drawing energy or when it fills up we'll wait for it to fill up and then when it, then when it fills up we'll have a good idea of how it will draw energy and eventually what's going to happen is it will spit uh these will get spit out uh once they go into here because it's all already configured for that it'll spit it out directly into this chest so we should if we configure this properly start to see tin ingots up here um so 36,000. Okay, so that's full. All right, so now we're going to configure it to start draining energy. Um, okay, so that, now that's draining. Now it's draining. Good. Okay, so you can see that that drains there. Um, if we do that, yep, that is starting to cook up. So that is all configured to start to cook. And we'll drain from here. This is still producing energy, so as long as we keep that full, these are all going to work as expected. Now there is a small problem in that uh, anything that comes down here as a bonus ore from the pulverizer, because sometimes when you grind these things up, and I've I've mentioned this in my past series, um, when you grind things up in the pulverizer, you get two of the ore that you put in, and occasionally you get down here in this yellow area, you get like a bonus ore. Um, this stuff will not output manually, uh, like a ferrous metal right here. So that's something that we're going to have to go ahead and just dump in here for now. Um, you have to keep an eye on that. We can configure it so that a, we have a pipe that just pulls that, um, pulls it out. Let's see, can, can we configure it so that, okay, so that pipe on the bottom. Uh, if I do this, you know, I don't want to do that because I think the problem with that is if I don't set that up properly, What's going to happen is it will bounce these up and around and it'll get stuck down here and it'll just bounce back and forth and they're going to bounce back and forth until all of this is out of the system. Yeah, so you can see there's the, the ferrous metal is was blocking the leadstone, uh, the lead ore from pulverizing itself up, but it's going to go right down here. So we'll go in here. We've got seven tin ingots. We've got a bunch of iron ingots now. So you can see it's automatically doing everything for us which is beautiful. That is exactly what we want. And now I'm curious about this. I'm curious if 
I can configure this to draw power for the carpenter. Uh, okay, so we'll probably need some seed oil and stuff. Uh, no recipe. Uh, so we've got... Okay, so we do have energy at stored in there. So it looks like that's gonna... It looks like that's gonna configure. Um, the only problem now is I don't have access to the... Uh, don't have access to the actual stone thing with the carpenter blocking it. Uh, let's see what we can do with the carpenter. Um, let's look at forestry stuff. There's got to be something really quick and easy we can make that will be useful with forestry. Um, and uses the carpenter. So let me see if I can just think of something at the moment. Uh, Arbor's chest, no. Clockwork engine. This, these are all various engines. The clockwork engine is kind of your basic engine for, uh, for starting out in forestry. It's got a clock, a copper gear, piston. Uh, clear glass and then wood planks and what you do with that one is you just wind it up um, just click on it to wind it up uh, it's it's convenient it's cheap but it requires you to be there um, for the whole thing so it's a little bit of a hassle to use and you'll eventually try to uh, try to get out of using it <laughs> it's it's very uh, very time consuming so let's see here uh, soldering iron do we want to make a soldering iron no we have bronze we have iron so that requires water. Um, and you, you'll see like recipes and stuff. You'll see like some will require like an additional thing up here uh, for crafting spectacles. Uh, sen sensitive paneling does not. Uh, you can see the, it's got the royal jelly. That's a very, uh, very hard to get. A shard, uh, carpenter. So silk wisps. These are all things if you've watched TFC Tuesday, you've seen us make uh, woven silk, silk wisps. Um, You've seen us do that stuff before. So these are all farm blocks, uh, the work table, thermionic. Gosh, there's got to be something that I can uh, I can do real quick here. Then we'll show that off. I don't want it to be the soldering iron because that's that's too easy to do. Bealizer. Oh, you could do one of the uh, one of the elizers. Um, Bealizer is actually probably pretty good to. That's probably actually a pretty good one. So tin, uh, stained glass, panes, redstone, and a diamond. So <laughs> we're already running out of diamonds. Uh, that's not good. We have to find some more. we we'll find a way to get more. Make some panes out of that. It's an easy way to get a lot of uh, sand and glass, which is just to put cobblestone in the pulverizer. Um, my only worry with that is if I put it into the, the redstone furnace, it will smelt down into glass immediately. And I may not necessarily want it to do that, so I'll have to figure out a sorting system so that I can I can sort out the glass and that it doesn't automatically input into the yeah. If I like for example, if I put, if I put that cobblestone in there, um, oh, that's why silver was blocking it up. Um, so that will do that pretty easily. And we'll take the the tin that we made here. Uh, we need two of those. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so that's good. Uh, what else do we need? We need some water. 2,000 micro buckets of water. So that's two buckets of water, essentially. We'll do that. 2,000 MB, 2,000 of 2,000. Uh, we'll take these items. And the way the carpenter works is very interesting. You put the items in here, but you're actually not putting the items in there physically. You're just setting up the recipe, so like that. Um, we can do that, and you'll you'll notice when it says a recipe because um, if you do this, you'll see a uh, the box here will change from having an exit to a question mark, and that will indicate that you have a recipe. And also, the recipe will show up here in the uh, the carpenter itself. So you can see you put the the items you need in here in these bottom slots. You lay out the actual recipe there. So you see, it says no no recipe again. And then all the items are gone. Um, so you just lay out the recipe there. And then once you have everything you need for it, the carpenter will automatically make it happen. So we have a beelizer now. And this, this bad boy, will be used for... Um, oh, so pulverized lead there. So yeah, this is going to show off too. Uh, when I do this, it will output the sand. And then the sand will just drop right down into here and cook up and turn into glass. So if I don't want the sand to become glass, then I have to 
get this filtered out and have it go to a separate chest, which I need different pipes for that. Um, this is just going to be a straight pipe down to the, uh, the redstone furnace. But the beelizer is something we'll be using soon, and all of these bees have different attributes. So as we, as we find bees, as we go ahead and start on our, our forestry adventure, and we'll need a scoop for that. Uh, so we got tree lizers too. That's something else that we'll make the flutter flutterizer. Um, but as we go ahead and get started with that, eventually, um, scoop recipe isn't too bad, is it? I'm trying to remember, I can't remember where it is because we need you need a scoop to bake the the hives um, or to break the hives. To bake the hives, yeah, you cook them. Um, the break the hive, yeah. The scoop is just wool and then a bunch of sticks, and that's how you break the hives and get the bees inside of them. Um, but once we get those, we'll have to set up, you know, apiaries and things like that. And there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with breeding that's very complex and very, uh, very, very much something I don't understand right now, but I'm going to have to learn. Uh, I have friends who know how to do it, so thank God for that. Uh, but yeah, you kind of got an idea of how the carpenter works. We got a carpenter. We have a redstone furnace. Everything is uh, hunky-dory right now. So what are we going to do next time? Well, we could go into Tinker's Construct stuff a little bit more. It's a possibility. Um, but what I think I want to do is I think I want to start setting up some of these other machines for thermal expansion. The sawmill, the induction smelter, which is very, very important. Um, and we'll have to make invar ingots and stuff like that next time. The magma crucible, uh, it's going to be a little bit of a difficulty. We'll have to go to nether for that one. Um, it needs invar gears as well. Um, fluid transposer, eh, maybe not so much. Glacial precipitator, igneous extruder. Um, could be aqueous accumulator. Yep, uh, that's something we may we may want to grab real quick. Uh, cyclic assembler, energetic infuser, not so much yet. And the phytogenic insulator. Um, insul yeah, insulator. We don't need to really worry about that at the moment. Um, so magnetic dyna uh, dynamo, once we go to nether, we may be able to use that. Compression, uh, reactant, and innervation. I don't know so much about those things. But uh, those are all things that we can possibly make at some point. Ooh, tesseract. Those are very expensive, if I remember that correctly. So we may hold off on that. Tesseracts are not cheap. Um... So we'll go ahead and make a uh, probably make a induction smelter next time. I think that's the next big item here. We'll have to move all this stuff too. Uh, maybe maybe we'll have to build another expansion and just throw all of our uh, our stuff on there. Make some more steam dynamos and stuff like that. But that's gonna be all for today. I know a quick episode, but thanks for hanging out, guys. I really hope you got an idea of some of the stuff that we can do. Just starting out here. This is. Um, much much we're we're in a pretty good spot right now we just need more resources we just need more trees we just need uh a lot more things and trust me this little house this little house right here this is gonna grow this is gonna grow by leaps and bounds and i'm starting to think we might end up living here after all um i've got some ideas for how to create a a power source the chocobos are out here and they're happy um uh, so there's a possibility that we could stick around here and stick at this point. Uh, we could move. I don't know. This was only intended to be a temporary house. Um, it, might, it may require some exploration. Perhaps we'll do that next time as well. We'll go out and explore a little bit and see if we can find anything weird. But that's it for now. I've taken up enough of your time. Thanks for hanging out, guys. And I will see you soon with more Crack Pack. Until then, take care.